A new day begins at one of Britain's highest profile free schools. This is King's Science Academy in Bradford. It's celebrated by the Prime Minister and his Education Secretary as one of the government's flagship free schools. Oh yes, the free schools have gone long for longer days. How do you find that having a longer day? <laughs> got a bit tiring, but you don't mind getting up a bit earlier. So you're getting a good education. Like all free schools, it's state-funded, but outside local education authority control. The policy is designed to help communities take charge of their children's education. But we've discovered that financial management at King's Science Academy has been out of control. There have been allegations of serious mismanagement, nepotism and even fraud. The King's Science Academy was set up by a young, dynamic Oxford graduate, the son of a Bradford bus driver. On paper, it was the ideal project, social mobility and better education. But within two years of opening, the complaints started to come in. And this is the result, an audit report we've obtained, which contains some devastating criticisms of financial management at this school. The leaked report is a draft internal audit written by a body called the Education Funding Agency, the EFA. It's part of the Department of Education. Newsnight can reveal that a whistleblower contacted the government last year with serious concerns about management and governance at the school. The report alleges that £86,000 from lead-in funding was used for purposes it was not intended for. It says, we identified a number of invoices that had been presented to the department where we could not find payments being made from the trust's account. And that the principal has admitted that some of the invoices submitted to the department for leading grant were fabricated invoices. These invoices were created by the trust to claim for rent that they did not pay. I mean, it's unbelievable if true. We are talking about here fraud uh, on a pretty serious scale and the question of the um, appropriateness of qualifications is is one thing in terms of what was this person the right person a fit person to run a school publicly funded school this is the man at the heart of the story Sajid Raza the principal who set up King's Science Academy two years ago. King's Science Academy is certainly well connected. Alan Lewis is described as executive patron and a key benefactor and supporter. Mr Lewis is a very successful businessman and the Conservative Party's vice chairman. We spoke to a former member of staff about his time at the school. He feared his career might be damaged if he spoke publicly so we agreed to protect his identity. It's the flagship free school. I think it's fair to say it's got huge political backing in the current political atmosphere at least. From that point of view, it's highly, highly protected. As a result of that, it's hard to hold someone to account if you've got that much protection. The school opened in 2011. The audit document says the new building was given public funds of over £10 million. Alan Lewis gave a helping hand. It's built on land leased from Mr Lewis's company at a cost of £296,000 a year for 20 years, about £6 million. In Bradford there were high hopes for the school, but some were uneasy. In Bradford, word soon got out that the principal was employing many members of his own family. This document lists them. His brother was on the governing body, his sister was a senior teacher at the school, his wife worked there too, and his father drove the school minibus. To outsiders, it was beginning to look like a family business. The EFA report says, We were informed that a small number of staff were employed by the academy without applying for posts, although they were interviewed by the governing board members to ensure their suitability. The report does not say if family members were appointed through the usual processes or not. We spoke to the school's former finance director, Dowd Khan. Did you have any, ever have any concerns that there were so many family members associated with this school? Um, at the time, uh, to be honest with you, uh, we thought they've all gone through the interview process and uh, somebody's interviewed them 
and uh, lo and behold, afterwards we found out that certain people were recruited without being interviewed. Would you say that's wrong? That's totally wrong, because uh, we're dealing with public money. Free schools are accountable to the Education Funding Agency, the EFA. The EFA visited the school in December 2012 as part of a routine inspection of its financial management. That visit highlighted significant weaknesses in the Academy's governance. The Academy had reported its own financial management as good. The EFA team found it was inadequate. The EFA passed the case to its audit investigation team to look into possible financial irregularities. Accountants CCW also conducted an historical review of the school's finances. Their work highlighted serious concerns. Benefactor and Conservative Vice Chairman Alan Lewis told us it was his recommendation to bring them in. Reading the EFA report, um, the message that comes out loud and clear is that there was chaos in terms of financial control and management at the Academy. Is that your experience when you were there? I think certainly as a classroom teacher, I think things have been constantly changed on a daily basis. But I think it's that level of chaos could be down to just incompetence based on inexperience. And that's one way of viewing it. I think the other way of viewing it is that it's because they were unaware essentially of how to run the school, it was almost being made up as they go along. Sajid would do a lot of things behind closed doors. He wouldn't get me involved or anybody else. And I, I don't know how much he was telling the governors. And even if he was telling them, the majority of them were all their friends anyway. So they would back them up. The most eye-catching conclusion, though, is that not all invoices submitted to the government for payment could be justified. The report states that the principal, Mr Raza, has admitted that some of the invoices submitted to the department to support the claim for leading grant were fabricated invoices. He blames former finance director Dowd Khan for fabricating six invoices from Mr Lewis's company. Have you actually ever seen this document? I've never seen it, no. Because it's pretty stark reading. Don't I don't mean, know anything about it. In one passage in this document, it actually says, Further follow-up with Mr Raza clarified that all six invoices supposedly from Hartley Investment Trust were raised by Dowd, you, the former finance director, so that Kifsa could claim rent from the Department of Education as part of its grant claim. I mean, they're trying to put the blame on you here. That's all rubbish. Um, I was uh, recruited for bookkeeping, bank reconciliation and other tasks. As far as I know, I was financial responsible for financial accounting, not financial management. Uh, any invoices that were passed, uh, they were passed on from Sajid, he would be responsible for opening all the post. David Ward MP sits on the Education Select Committee. A school governor for 30 years, he's long been a critic of the free school policy. It sounds as an absolute complete disaster and a financial nightmare. And if this is true, uh, and we must ensure that this is made public, because this is such a flagship policy for the government, there is always a suspicion that anything that is critical of free schools will not be made public and that is not simply in terms of the academic performance of the school, but actually the governance, uh, quality uh, and integrity of the governance procedures as well. We also tried to speak to Conservative Vice Chairman Alan Lewis, the former executive patron at the school. His company spokesman said his contribution to the academy has been that of a benefactor. At no time has Mr Lewis had responsibility for the financial management of the academy. We also asked the principal about governance. The school's lawyers, Carter Ruck, told us, It's not appropriate for us to comment on specific allegations arising from the draft report. Their response added, The matters which you raise relate to issues regarding finance and governance two years ago, during the Academy's setting up process. Any sums incorrectly claimed have been repaid. The Department of Education told us there is a plan for the school to pay back £76,000 after expenditure couldn't be justified. The department stressed both the EFA and the school had taken action when problems were revealed. Six months after the AHA report was drafted, knowing we were about to broadcast our investigation, the Department of Education published the report on its website. A spokesman said, 
we found some serious failings in financial management. A plan is in place to recover funds. But he also said academies and free schools are subject to tougher financial accountability measures than other schools. However, we take swift action when concerns are raised. Bradfordians will be left wondering about the future of their free school, but the Department of Education says there are more scandals in conventional state schools. Both the academy and the Department of Education say that governance and financial management are much improved.